In our last session, we took a look at fills relating to our vector objects in Corel Draw X6. And in this session, we're going to take a look at outlines. Go ahead and zoom out here, and I'll just zoom in down here in the workspace. And we'll just create another simple rectangle. Left click, hold down, drag, and I'll give that a uniform fill of blue. Now I can see down here in my status bar that I have a 100% K outline at 0 0.500 points. And I want to change that. Now I could double click here and that would bring up my outline pen dialog box, but this is not as interactive as the object properties docker. So I want to go back to the object properties docker and you can see here we've got outline and it's at 0 0.05 points. I can change what type of measurements I want associated with my outline. I could go with inches here, or I could go with, say, picas and points. Go ahead and go back to points. Now you'll notice if I come down here, I can scroll down and select a default preset such as 8, or I can key this in, 12.0, and then hit enter for my outline. I can select a color here or I can right click in my color palette for a different color on my outline. I can also select a style for my outline. Right there, now that's a dotted outline. I can also, with these three dots here, click on settings for my style and create a custom style for my outline. A custom dot set up here. As you can see, just click on the little pixels and dots and you'll have that set up and select OK. Now you'll notice down here at the bottom, I can change my corners and end caps. I can have round corners and round end caps, and that changes how my outline is applied to my object. I'm going to change my style back to the default. I could change to a beveled corner and to an extended square cap. And you can zoom in and see how that changes my corners. That's rounded that's metered. Next to this we've got our meter limit. And let's take a look at this. I'm going to convert this rectangle to a curve. I'm going to get my shaping tool. I'm going to double click here and lay down a node and pull this over. Now you can see that with my meter set at 45 that my corner cuts off and comes to a stop on my outline. And there's times when I'm working with graphics that I don't want that. Well if I change my meter limit and left click and just scroll that down actually you can see now that comes out to a point. But it's somewhere up around the 30s that it doesn't come over. So you want to be aware of this meter limit. Now there's some advanced settings underneath this arrow that you also want to be aware of. You've got a starting and ending arrow. I almost ever use those. Now let's take a look at down here in the advanced attributes scale with object. I have this rectangle. I'm just going to control Z back to the regular regular rectangle. And actually this is a curve now, but if I left click, hold down and change the size of this, you'll notice that my outline stays the same size. Left click and bring this up. But if I have scale with objects selected and then I scale, my outline will scale with my image. Important setting to be aware of. There's also behind fill. And we'll zoom in and take a look at that. I click on behind fill and you can see now half of my outline is behind my fill here and half is on the outside. We'll take a look at that with transparency so we understand how that works. I'm going to go to transparency, uniform, and I'm going to put that only on my fill. And now you can see that your outline has gone halfway inside behind your vector object and halfway outside. And when you go to behind fill, that's what happens. You can see right there because we've got the transparency to just dem demonstrate that. You can select overprint outline here if you like. I want to take a look at working with your nib here because here we've got our nib stretch and our tilt nib. I'm going to go to a rounded and I'm going to go ahead and round here also. Then I'm going to look at these settings. Watch these settings here as I left click and move this nib here interactively and release it. And you can see what it does. It's applying the nib here. It's thin here and fat here. 
And very often I'll use that when I'm illustrating things. And that'll go back. Now if I want to reset this, I could just change this to 0 and 0. And we would go back to a different nib setting. Oh, excuse me, not 0. I want to go to 100. And hit Enter. Cancel. Oh, got to have my object selected when I do that. I've got 1 and 0. I want this back to 100 and then hit enter. And I want this to 100 and hit enter. Okay, now we're back and we're reset. Now, looking at this, one of the things I really want to make you aware of when you're dealing with outlines is that there's a very important option in draw that I use very frequently when I'm dealing with outlines and that's up here under arrange or you could hit control shift Q which is convert outline to object and go ahead and click on that and you can see what has happened here is now I have a separate object a vector object that was created as my outline and hit control Z and we're going to take a look at the application of this in a quick project I'm going to create a simple apple shape I'll do that starting with my ellipse tool. I'm going to just create a simple ellipse here. I'm going to go and convert that to curves. I'm going to go to my shape tool. I'm going to bring this node down here a bit. I'm going to convert that to a cusp. I'm going to pull out here. I'm going to pull out here. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this node here to create my apple. I'm going to pull this down just a bit, probably right about there. I'm going to change that to a cusp. I'm going to pull out this arm here and I'm going to pull out this control arm here. Now I can pull this out here a little bit just to create my apple shape a little bit make it look a little bit more like an actual apple. And I can pull these control arms in down here at the bottom to bring the bottom in just a little bit smaller. Now see I just illustrated an apple but I didn't go to my Bezier tool. I started with a shape. The next thing I want to do is create a stem. And that I will do with my Bezier tool. So I'll zoom in here and I'll just click right here beneath the apple and just left click, hold down, and create an arched shape. And I'm going to give that a 8 point. No, we probably want to go a little bit bigger. I'll go to 16 point. Now this I'm going to take and I'm going to go arrange, convert outline to object. I'm going to fill that with a brown color. Then I'm going to go to my shape tool and I'm just going to pull this node here out just a little bit to give this some more characteristic or detail for that stem shape. So there's my stem. Now I want to go ahead and create my apple. I'll go and fill this with a red. I'm going to go ahead and right click here, order to back of page. I'm going to give this an outline of let's say eight points. Now you can see that that outline looks very hard edged, very vectory. But if I go to round corners and end cap, and then I adjust my nib, you can see that now my lines aren't quite so vectory. Now I can take this outline, right click on my apple, hold down, drag it up to the stem of my apple release and select copy outline here. And I got the same outline there. Now here I might want to take this nib and adjust it a little bit so it's a little bit thicker there on the top but yet thinner on the side something like that and now I've got the apple shape set up with an outline that's fairly natural now if I want to do some shading and highlighting in this we could use the tools that we worked with back in our tutorial on working with our fills at this point in time we can see some of the things that we've worked with in the outline and I think that dealing with the interactivity that we have here we want to be aware of how all of this works so take a few minutes to just experiment with your outlines and don't forget about the arrange convert outline to object feature because I use that very frequently and we'll see that in some of the additional training series here in the getting started with CorelDRAW X6 training series. We'll go ahead and wrap here on outlines and we'll continue in our next session.